Greetings, and welcome to the Vicinity Motors Corp, previously Grande West Transportation Group, fourth quarter and full mm -hmm. year 2020 corporate update conference call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. Before we begin the formal presentation, I'd like to remind everyone that statements made on today's call and webcast, including those regarding future financial results and industry prospects are forward looking and may be subject to a number of risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from those described in the call. Please refer to the company's regulatory filings for a list of associated risks and we would also refer you to the company's website for more supporting industry information. I would now like to hand the call over to William Trainer, founder and chief executive officer of Vicinity Motors. William, the floor is yours. Thank you, operator, and good morning, everyone. I'm pleased to welcome you today to the fourth quarter in year-end 2020 corporate updates and conference call. The story of 2020 has been one of transformation as we've all faced a global pandemic. The team at Vicinity strove to fulfill our deliveries to customers throughout North America while facing unprecedented challenges. Given the uh, pandemic, 2020 was a year of foundation building, highlighted by the addition of innovative new electric vehicles to our product lineup and the preparations for successful expansion into the U.S. market as we put in place the pieces necessary to launch our Buy America compliant U.S. assembly factory. Despite countless logistic challenges brought on by the global pandemic, we were able to deliver 55 vicinity buses in 2020. More importantly, we expect to deliver over 100 buses in the first half of 2021, representing over 45 to 50 million in revenue an incredible feat considering we have only just begun our U.S. expansion. From an innovation perspective, the launch of our innovative Vicinity Lightning EV was a crucial inflection point for the company, positioning us to deliver upon the future needs of an increasingly sustainability-minded public transit market. Our world-class purpose-built EV design includes world-class technology partners, allowing us to integrate proven battery systems and components from tier one suppliers like BMW. The development and production of a mid-size, low floor, fully electric transit bus with proven, readily available technology that can accommodate up to four wheelchair positions is a huge step forward for our company and the transit industry. The vicinity Lightning EV received its first orders in 2021, with further indications of interest in additional customers expected shortly. 25 vicinity EVs are currently in the production phase to meet near-term anticipated demand. Our operations are running very smoothly, and we continue to refine our strategy to meet expected demand as we transition into 2021. We strengthen our management team with the addition of respected Canadian transit leader, Manuel Achadina as chief operating officer and initiated the development of our Washington state manufacturing plant and US headquarters with operations expected to commence later this year. In his new role, Mr. Achadina will drive innovation and efficiency to maximize our operations and engineering teams position the build of our Washington manufacturing facility to support optimal output and scale and increase overall productivity in the organization as we are poised to rapidly scale. We have a solid U.S. growth strategy in place as our manufacturing facility there is schooling up. In order to grow our sales in a significant U.S. market, we've entered into a strategic distribution agreement with ABC companies, a leading provider of motor coach and transit equipment in North America to distribute vicinity heavy duty vehicles throughout the United States. This partnership will allow us to scale operational 
and its critical growth market and is more significant in many ways than many may realize. In addition, recently, the state of New Mexico selected vicinity buses in a statewide purchasing contract that gives the state transit agencies the right to purchase directly from the company's diverse bus portfolio. We expect to see similar contract wins in other US states in the months to come. Along with these strategic shifts, We've recognized the need to change our corporate name to better reflect our increasing focus on the commercialization of our industry leading vicinity buses, particularly our new electric lineup. The updated name will bring together our sales and marketing branding with our corporate identity to take us forward as a major player in the North American public transit market space. Now with that, I'll turn it over to Dan to review the financial results for the quarter and the year ended December 31st, 2020. Dan? Thanks, William. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll constrain my portion to a brief review of our financial results. A full breakdown is available in our regulatory filings and in the press release that crossed the wire after markets closed today. Please note, I'll refer to adjusted EBITDA and other non-GAAP measures. For the calculation of adjusted EBITDA and other non-GAAP measures, please refer to the Q4 MDNA, which is available on CDAR. Revenue for the full year 2020 totaled $26.1 million, of which $4.5 million, or 17.2%, was earned in the fourth quarter. This compares to revenues of $24.6 million for the full year of 2019, of which $5.4 million was earned in the fourth quarter. Our gross profit was $3.3 million, or 13% of revenue, for the year ended December 31st, 2020, as compared to a gross profit of $4.3 million, or 18% of revenue for the prior year. Gross profit for the fourth quarter of 2020 was $2.2 million, or 49% of revenue, as compared to $0.7 million, or 13% of revenue in the fourth quarter of 2019. The margins in 2020 were negatively affected by sales mix and our 2021 deliveries generally have higher expected margins than those realized in 2020. Looking ahead, product mix and margins before allocating any overhead are expected to be more in line with those realized in 2018 and 2019. Total operating expenses for 2020 were $7.6 million, of which $2.7 million were incurred in the fourth quarter. Total operating expenses for 2019 total $9.3 million, of which 2.4 million were incurred in the fourth quarter. The decrease in expenses for 2020 as compared to 2019 is mainly attributable to the elimination of external commissions in Canada that took effect in late 2019, a reduction in salaries due to government subsidies and a reduction in travel expenses for 2020. Cash used in operating activities for the full year ended December 31st, 2020 totaled $7.7 .7 million compared to $3.8 million for the full year ended December 31st, 2019. The decrease from previous year was mainly due to the change in non-cash working capital items. Net loss for the full year 2020 was $4.4 million, or 17 cents per share, as compared to a net loss of $5 million, or 21%, 21 cents per share in 2019. Net loss in the fourth quarter of 2020 totaled 600000 or $0.02 cents per share, compared to a net loss of $1.8 million, or $0.07 cents per share, in the fourth quarter of 2019. The reduction of net loss is mainly a result of SG&A savings of $1.2 million in 2020 versus 2019, offset by lower overall bus margins in 2020 due to product mix. Adjusted EBITDA loss for 2020 was $2.3 million, compared to an adjusted EBITDA loss of $2.4 million for 2019. Adjusted EBITDA for the fourth quarter of 2020 was positive $0.2 million, compared to an adjusted EBITDA loss of $0.8 million for the three months ended December 31st, 2019. Working capital, as of December 31st, 2020, totaled $16.7 million, compared to $12.2 million as at December 31st, 2019. Throughout the year, we were able to ensure ongoing liquidity through delivering on existing orders, renegotiating credit facilities, and product line expansion. Financially, our company is in a strong position. We fortified our balance sheet, 
which has very few long-term liabilities, and our liquidity is not an issue. Overall, the fundamentals of our operations are very positive, and we remain well positioned for future growth and profitability. I'd like to now pass back to William to offer some closing remarks, after which we'll begin our Q&A session. Uh, thank you, Dan. Looking ahead into 2021, we are incredibly well positioned to create long-term value for our shareholders. We are intensely focused on our 2021 order book, completing our U.S. manufacturing plant, and increasing orders for our innovative vicinity lightning EV. We believe that we will realize twice our full year 2020 sales in the first half of 2021 alone. An incredible feat and a testament to the demand we're seeing in the marketplace today. We look forward to announcing new sales, product and strategic milestone achievements in the months ahead. I thank you all for calling, and now I'd like to hand the call back to the operator to open our question and answer period. Thank you. Thank you, William. We will now begin the question and answer session. To join the question queue, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. You will hear a tone acknowledging your request. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing any keys. To withdraw your question, please press star, then two. We will pause for a moment as callers join the queue. The first question comes from Mike Shalisky with Collier Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, I wanted to start off by maybe asking if it's possible to ask about your bid pipeline. Um, can, can you give us a sense as to uh, the number of units or the dollar amount that you're bidding on or looking at this year versus this time last year? Is there a much larger pie of, uh, of, of, of orders to pick from these days? Yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, good question. Yes, you know, 2020 was really a flat year. We didn't see a lot of tenders coming out, uh, not very many uh, RFPs uh, at all. And uh, you know, 2021 is really shaped up. We see a, a lot of activity in the marketplace right now. In fact, uh, you know, we just recently announced that New Mexico bid that we we're successful on. We see a lot of other bids um, uh, coming forth. Uh, some of them are very close to uh, to closing off for us right now. Uh, and we see that on both sides of the border. We see that in the U.S. and we see it on the Canadian side. Uh, and a lot of interest uh, in our EV product uh, to date. Uh, great, that's great color. Maybe that will feed to my next question here about the uh, about the EV environment. Um, can you give us a sense as to what the competitive environment is on EV tenders compared to uh, other propulsion? Are, are there the same number of competitors when you bid on those? And uh, I'm curious if there are any kind of pricing differences between EV um, and ICE versions of the buses. Yeah, another good question. Yeah, our product, uh, we developed our vicinity lightning product to actually come to the marketplace and be competitive in around a 300, 350,000 US dollar uh, uh, bid range. Um, we're seeing a lot of our competitors come in at uh, 600 to $700,000. So we think we've got a very uh, extreme uh, uh, competitive edge. And I think that, you know, you really have to get down to, you know, what, what we did to get our bus into that price range. You know, our vicinity lightning, we really think it's going to be a super competitively uh, uh, priced vehicle and, and do well in the market uh, with that price range. What we did is we really aligned ourselves more with what the automotive industry is doing. The automotive industry, when you look at the, uh, what, the, what their battery packs particularly are, they're, they're a 400 volt battery pack, it's easily charged. Our vehicle has an onboard charger that allows it to charge uh, six, seven hours on an overnight charge. Uh, and we're not seeing that uh, with the uh, with the competitors' uh, vehicles. There are a lot, a lot of the competitors' vehicles uh, are taking a lot more um, uh, uh, effort and um, uh, infrastructure to actually bring in, uh, you know, a three-phase power grid to to uh, charge the vehicles. So we think we've positioned ourselves extremely well. The other thing that we've done that I think will really lead us uh, 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 as a technical advantage is. Uh, you know, we kept we kept our, our EV under 22,500 GBW, 
And the reason we did that was so that we could incorporate a hydraulic brake system into the vehicle. It, with a hydraulic brake system, it allows uh, uh, the customers to buy it and operate it without a, uh, an air brake, a commercial air brake ticket. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, again, we see that as being a huge advantage uh, in the market as, as we move forward. Got it. Um, I, I wanted to turn to the outlook for 21 as well. I, you know, if you wanted to give us guidance, you would have, but I wanted to just ask this. I mean, look, looking at the increase, uh, just the first half alone, increased revenues, looking at the different plateau for gross margins. I don't know much about the sg &A. It sounds like you might have some, if anything, just a small amount of growth there to the higher sales. But is there a way you can tell us whether you think you'd be positive uh, on the EBITDA side firmly in uh, 2021? Dan, you want to yeah. answer that? Yeah, no problem. Um, yes, we expect to be EBITDA positive for sure for 2021. Um, I think that, you know, even with the guidance that we've, we've shown for, um, our, ex, our expected deliveries for Q1 and Q2. That, I mean, we, we're going to be EBITDA positive here for Q1 and Q2 as well, most likely. So I think that, um, you know, for tra trailing 12 months, you'll see us be EBITDA positive very soon here and continue on for the rest of the year. I do want to follow up with one last one before I, I pass it along. On the working capital side, you've got positive EBITDA, but you've got pretty tremendous orders to build here over the next, we've probably already built some and you have more to, more to come here. Do you have a, a large working capital investment that has to be made um, throughout the, for the uh, rest of the year? Uh, we do, we have some working capital that we, we will have to invest, um, but we do have a, an operating line of $20 million on uh, ABL. And, you know, we have, uh, we do have positive working capital right now. So um, we're in a pretty good position to grow for sure, um, and you know we can grow our facility, our facilities as needed to um, to try and help out with any working capital needs. But yeah, definitely there will be, um, especially with new product lines, we'll, we'll definitely have some increased expenditures into inventory as we go on. Got it. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. The next question comes from Chris Souther with E. Riley. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks so much for taking my question, guys. I uh, just want to start out, you know, a little bit more on uh, 2021. Um, you know, not giving guidance here, but maybe just talk a little bit about the cadence um, and you know where we are with some you know, of those first half uh, orders that you talked about, and you know, with the books closing for the first quarter. Maybe just provide a little color of kind of the progress uh, for the first quarter and you know visibility into the second quarter and the back half here. Any, any color you provide would be helpful. Sure, I think uh, Dan here again. We've we've given some guidance here. Um, we're we're trying to stay away from giving full guidance for the year, but the the first half of the year we'll definitely see over 100 buses. Um, that's that's for sure. Uh, the first quarter I think will be a a very positive surprise for everybody, and that's just a, a good change from from the last year. We'll we'll definitely outsell. The first in the first quarter, we'll outsell all of last year. Put it that way, and um, yeah, we expect that to continue into the second quarter. We we do have the potential. We will be heavy in the first half, though. So I'll say that if that won't that momentum won't continue into Q3 and Q4, um, but we still expect to uh, to have some good deliveries for the rest of the year. We have good orders coming in right now. Um, it's just whether we'll be able to deliver all of them before the end of the year or not. We're just Kind of uh, finalizing those projections right now. Understood. Uh, so maybe just you know uh, you could talk a little bit more about that New Mexico win here. Uh, what is the timing and scope uh, you think of that win? Can you you know just give a little bit more color there? Well, what we see with a lot of these state contracts is you, you qualify on the on a state contract for transit authorities to purchase off of it. It's a it's a great uh, uh, system. Uh, now we just got to get the sales team in there and, and take purchase orders. Uh, you know we're we're extremely competitively priced, and we really expect to to gather up a lot of sales in the areas that we're we're winning these contracts in. Okay, uh, that's very helpful. And then you know maybe just a little bit on uh, so the lightning side. You know obviously Biden's plan today highlighted you know need for replacement of uh, a large uh, you know uh, fleet of vehicles here that we're talking about. 
um, for buses. And, you know, I, I wanted to get a sense of you know, the timing of, you know, the lightning starting to ship out. You've got, you know, the first five and then you talked about having 25 in production. I think previously you had mentioned, you know, uh, capable of producing up to 200 of those this year. Um, you know, where are we in kind of building out, um, you know, that production and, um, you know, what, what is kind of the plan over there? Yeah, you know, we're, we're excited with the, with the EV product. Uh, we currently, you know, have 25 in production. Uh, we actually have orders uh, for 15 of the first 25 uh, that are coming, that, that are firm purchase orders uh, in hand as we speak. Um, you know, we've, we've been in production here. We expect the first models actually to be able to uh, get out to, for demonstration purposes sometime in June. You know, the first five that come, uh, that, that we have available you know, really, we've got one uh, uh, one earmark for demonstration purposes in Canada. We've got two uh, for the U.S., one for East Coast, one for West Coast. We've got one that has to go have some uh, EPA uh, 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 testing done on it uh, for range testing. To uh, you need to uh, qualify your your kilowatt per hour usage for for mileage. Um, and then the other one is, uh, you know, we want to send one down right away to the Altoona test grounds. Uh, in the U.S., a lot of the uh, a lot of the um, uh, tenders are FTA uh, funded, so the FTA traditionally uh, uh, gives up to 80% of the purchase price to the uh, to the transit authorities uh, um, on a on a bid. Um, some of that criteria is, you know, you need to meet 70% U.S. content. We tick that box. You need to have an Altoona test done. We've got, we've got that with all of our other vehicles. We just need to have it with the EV, but we're not expecting any difficulty there. Uh, you know, our our um, uh, standard buses that we put through, you know, particularly, uh, you know, take a look at our 30-foot uh, heavy-duty vehicle we put through Altoona. It was best in class. So it's built with the same type of platform, same engineering uh, principles. So we're expecting it to do extremely well at the, at the test grounds. And the third thing you need is you, you need to have that assembly factory, which we're well underway on to, to uh, have completed in Washington State. Excellent. And maybe on the Washington facility, you could just talk a little bit about you know, the CapEx cadence and the you know, pace of hiring that you expect to see throughout the year to get that uh, facility up and running, you know, around year end, it sounds like. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Dan here again. Um, so for CapEx, we're looking at spending, you know, around 10 million this year, um, you know, kind of by year end, we'd be looking to spend that much for, for CapEx. Got it. And then just uh, hiring as far as kind of staff in the facility, you know, where, where are we as, as far as kind of, you know, preparing for that, um, for that action there? Yeah, we have, uh, you know, our new chief, uh, Executive officer, our chief operating officer, sorry, is uh, is handling that. Uh, we're well underway to, to put the staffing and everything in place that we're going to need for the facility. Yeah. We're working very closely with the state of Washington as well for for all the incentives and grants and training programs that are in place. Excellent. Good luck with the ramp here. Oh, thank you. Thanks. The next question comes from Bruce Chan with Stifle. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, guys. And, uh, congrats on all the progress. Uh, thank you for taking my questions here. Um, at the risk of beating a, a dead horse, uh, you know, a little bit, when I think about the 100 first half deliveries, is there a way to benchmark how much of those are pull forwards from last year and how much of those are coming from organic new order growth? Uh, yeah, so we did announce last year that we had a, a pretty large order that we were trying to complete before the end of the year, and that was, um, you know, around 90 buses. Some of them we got into last year, but the majority of those uh, we've been delivering this year. Um, but we're still within our customer um, expect, expected timeline there. So that did push into this year. Um, as Will stated, you know, things really slowed down last year for orders as well. So we are completing off, uh, we, we are, we do have quite a few orders that we took at the end of last year, kind of when things started to um, get a little better here in Canada. 
we will be delivering on those over the next uh, quarter to two quarters. And we do have orders of, that we've started to receive that we are rushing to get done as quickly as we can uh, this year. We still think we can get quite a few orders done this year for um, Q4. And just we're still talking about taking a couple of orders that we could still deliver this year right now. So we are starting to see new orders come in and the pipeline is definitely getting a lot bigger. Um, and that's that's where you know we're we're trying to build into next year right now, but we're definitely seeing a lot more interest right now, and you know interest in our EV product as well. That's that's really encouraging. Uh, very helpful. Um, maybe just another one here for you, uh, more of a background question. But you know, as we think about seasonality of revenue and GP and SGNA through the year, can you remind us if there are you know, any typical patterns that we should look out for in terms of the bid cycle and parts ordering and factory shutdown that you know how that may play out through the model yeah it's it's down here again it it doesn't really affect us that much um you know other than you know we try to get things done before the year end sometimes um and if you have if you have some you know uh public entities that are bidding for buses, they have their own budget that they have to work, watch out for. So they want to be spending money within a current year, within a certain year. But other than that, you know, there's not really, um, it's not really any cyclicality that, that we see um, from, from a delivery standpoint. Just one more here. You know, we talked a lot about the EV uh, buses, the, the lightning, but we haven't spent a lot of time on CNG products. Um, which seems to be, you know, pretty good go-between in terms of the offering. Um, what does demand look like for those CNG units? Uh, and, you know, have you seen many customers that are cross-shopping CNG and EV, or are the CNG units mostly replacing the, the diesels? Yeah, we've seen a, a greatly increased demand on CNG buses. You know, most agencies now are looking to see how they can, you know, reduce greenhouse uh, emissions and, and be a, a lot greener. And, and the CNG does fit that bill. You know, it, the name for the CNG engines are near zero, and there's a reason for that. They're, they're very low on the emission uh, uh, output. Um, and we, we see a lot of activity on CNG still as we speak. You know, we look at the, uh, uh, at the EV. The EV business, definitely, uh, there's more activity, a lot of activity coming for the EVs. We have you know, quite a few outstanding tenders here that we've bid on the EV that we're waiting to see what happens, which is very interesting because, you know, we're, we're just entering in with our first product. Uh, and once we launch the, uh, the, the EV, the, the um, you know, the built up uh, uh, information that was requested for it is just, just amazing. And, that, and that's on both sides of the, uh, of the border. Um, but you know the EV is going to be. It's going to take a while before you see the EV market take over 100% of the of the vehicles. And I think that's where you know we're in a very good position as we're transitioning into that EV market. Uh, you know we have uh, we have existing product like the CNG bus that uh, that fits the needs for a lot of a lot of customers. Okay, that's it for me today. Appreciate the time. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bruce. At this time, this concludes our question and answer session. I'd now like to turn the call back over to Mr. William Trainer for his closing remarks. Oh, th thank you, operator. We'd like to thank each, each of you for joining our earnings conference call. We look forward to, continue, to continuing to update you on our ongoing progress and growth. If you're unable to answer any of the questions, if we were unable to answer any of the questions, please reach out to our IR firm, MZ Group, who will be more than happy to assist. Thank you so much, and everybody have a great day. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude today's teleconference. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect your lines at this time and have a wonderful day.